Hi, welcome back to my channel. I talk about books and art here. And yeah, so glad you joined me for my February reading wrap up. I read, I want to say like six books this month, maybe seven. And I'm here to talk about them. And last time when I edited, I realized I didn't give much of a synopsis on each book. So I will rectify that this time. I will start with a book that I haven't technically finished. I'm really close. I know you can't tell it's out of focus, but it's called The Animators. It's a story of a friendship that goes through a lot of highs and lows. They are an animating duo and they make feature length animation films and they kind of uh, extract from their life. Um, and that's kind of a question I think this book is asking is like, is that, should you do that? Or does it lead to ruin uh, if you do that? I think this book is surprising me. Jazz, if you're watching this, thank you for gifting it to me. I like the cover and I think the first 10 pages or so almost turned me off because it was like set in college. But fortunately, this book is not <laughs> All set in college. I think when I was in college, it was more exciting to read books set in college, but now it's like, I don't care. <laughs> You're 20, like, you know, grow up, you have other problems. But yeah, this book tackles um, sexuality and a big friendship and what to do when you have health conditions, um, family, when you leave a family and you are like, Seeking Chosen Family. I really have liked it. I, yeah, I'm really curious what these last little bits um, will entail, in part because there's a character that was like very significant and hasn't come back yet. And I think they might, but someone related to the character just did. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see. Um, the animators, and I didn't say the author, did I? This is Kayla Ray Whitaker. I don't think, I think this is a debut. All right, next I'll talk about Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. And it was, it could have been a little shorter, but it's a novel about a Indian woman uh, dealing with her aging mother and sorting through her own feelings about losing this really important person in her life to dementia. Uh, is it dementia or Alzheimer's? You know, I think it's dementia. And she's married to a non-Indian resident, so he's Indian American. And they uh, seem to have an okay relationship. Um, there's like small snippets, we get kind of vignettes with them. And I think... I read it as this man is still very secondary to like the matriarch and this woman that is her mom and guiding her through. If you're looking for a quiet, you know, very domestic with like tinges of again, like what it means to love your mom and the like, spirituality of a kid. And I don't remember how much potentially undercurrents of sexual violence there was. There's some of that, but fortunately, I think that was handled really well. Anyway, Burn Sugar. Gender Explorers. What a great name. I love that name. Uh, this was really a compilation of interviews with trans or non-binary identifying British youth. Um, and apparently there's like two different groups that the author connected with to have access and to get to know these young people and have them share like what do they like about school what um challenges they face but also like the great joys of being trans it was a simple concept well executed um if you're looking to read more trans voices then i recommend homesick for another world this is a short story collection um, written by Otessa Moshveg. So the only other Moshveg I'd read was My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Um, it's weird. 
It's a weird short story collection. A lot of them are perverse. A lot of cringy, like super like, ooh, okay, like did that character just do that? And kind of, I wish I remembered what exactly certain descriptions was, but I think Mashveg used them twice and I was like, yeah. Oh, it's like pockmarked, right? Like pockmarked skin. That really grosses me out. Like I don't have, it's just the imagining of it. Like I don't care, like pockmarked skin is not, right? It doesn't mean anything. It's just skin. But just imagining something about that is pretty visceral. Like it's a visceral feeling in my body. Um, and what else about it? Yeah, I think if you're looking for, um, you know, characters that are absurd and need some help, <laughs> um, could, could use some therapy. Sure, read it. Somebody's Daughter. This is a memoir by Ashley C. Ford, who I know has quite the presence on the internet. Uh, fantastic writer. And this, as memoirs go, details her life and talks about her childhood growing up. Excuse me. Ooh, growing up where? Where did she grow up? Yeah, and her father's in prison and her mom is single mom, you know, making things work for her and her siblings. And then it's like about her going to college and discovering her kind of chosen family once again and getting into her like long-term partnership. That really comes towards the very end. It's more about who she was as a kid and her relationship with her mom. I guess this is the month of reading about moms for me. And <clears throat> yeah, I really appreciated her willingness to be vulnerable and tell it like it is and I think the heart of the story is really her connection to her family and how that has changed and been challenged and her internal battles with you know did this person make the right choice could they have protected me in these moments definitely um warning for sexual violence. If you're not a memoir person, don't pick it up, but if you're a memoir person, you'll like it. All right, two more reads. One was kind of this run of the mill, you know, I've read a dozen of these books now about time management, basically, or how to be a better worker, kind of, or person, or be productive, and um, show up for things. Uh, so it's called A Minute to Think, and yeah, I think they all say, these books say the same thing. Um, you know, taking pauses during the day is my takeaway and trying to emulate the feeling that you get when you go into the shower, right? And you kind of let your mind wander that we should be carving out more time to just think and be with our thoughts. Testimony. Now, this was a, it was published pretty recently but I thought the author did a great job of taking me back to the 50s. I think it's late 50s, early 60s. And it's set at a women's college. There's a history professor, um, that's kind of our main character, but this switches perspective and goes to different characters. So the main professor is gay and she is, you know, seeking a new relationship. She'd been in a really long-term partnership that went south and, or <laughs> went south. Um, yeah, it just didn't work out. So then uh, she's, you know, slowly, you know, hoping to find another person. And then another person does come into her life, but there's like a scandal of the school. I think you really are just seeing the politics of a homophobic institution and how it will do anything and you know work really hard to be violent towards um yeah lgbtq identifying people and i don't know i think this book is really funny like i really like actually laughed at certain moments and it just made me really happy because i think that is also very true of the queer experience is like you have a sharper sense of humor. Maybe that's a broad generalization. Okay, those are the books I read this month. I may have missed one or two. Ah, I'll link my Goodreads below if you're curious. Bye.